Okay, Carrie, if you would like to go ahead and start, it looks like everyone who has joined, um, wait just a second. And then Thomas, if you wanna go ahead and start recording, but I'll keep watching and admitting people, Carrie, if you wanna go ahead and start. Okay, sounds good. Well, hello everyone and welcome to our February synchronous meeting of the assessment playbook for distance and blended learning book study. My name is Carrie McDaniel and I'm joined this evening by Misty Higgins. We are professional learning coordinators in the Office of Teaching and Learning, Division of Program Standards at the Kentucky Department of Education. Also joining us in the background tonight as a producer is Thomas Klaus academic program manager at the Kentucky Department of Education. He will be sending you into breakout rooms throughout the evening and posting information in the chat. So for those of you who were unable to attend our opening session with Doug Fisher, I also wanted to let you know and remind you that that link to the video recording can be found in your assessment playbook study plan in Google Classroom. And you can feel free to pull that up and watch that at your convenience. Before we get started, I just wanted to let you know, you may want to grab a notebook in case you'd like to jot down notes during our session tonight. If you prefer to type, you can just open up a Google or Word document, and you're going to have some times tonight to jot down your thinking before we go into a breakout room. So you'll want your notebook handy. You may also want to have your phone handy to take a picture of the screens prior to going into a breakout room. So you can quickly look back at the questions that are the focus of that breakout room. And just know that we'll be posting those in the chat as well. But we wanted you to have that camera handy for that. And then finally, the last piece is you may want to have your text handy. Sometimes we'll reference different places throughout the text as optional lookups throughout our assessment playbook time tonight. So I'm gonna pause for just a few seconds and let you get those things around you. And then if you are new to Zoom or it's a platform you don't use as often, you may want to change to speaker view to allow you to see the screen better and the people you are in a breakout room with by viewing them along the top. But if you are familiar with Zoom and have a view you're more comfortable with, you can change it to your own personal preference, but you'll find where you can change the view in the top right hand corner there. The other thing we wanted to point out is that we're going to be using the chat feature. So if you look at the ribbon along the bottom of your screen, depending on what device you're on, you'll see the speech bubble with the word chat. So if you click on that, it will open up a chat box on the right hand side of your screen. So again, we'll be utilizing that throughout the night as well. The very last thing I wanted to point out, one of the other purposes, aside from giving you opportunities to talk to colleagues across the state, is that we hope to provide you with tonight is how can you structure engagement in the virtual setting. So because we've heard a lot of conversations from teachers and district leaders around engagement in the virtual setting, we wanted to intentionally model strategies tonight for collaboration that you can have in the virtual setting. So to help us with managing some of that collaboration, we will be broadcasting messages to you in your breakout rooms. So on most devices, the place you are going to see most of the broadcast is that blue ribbon at the top center part of your screen. So just know that that blue ribbon will say from Thomas Klaus and will tell you what the directions are. So we'll be managing some of those breakout room interactions with that broadcast feature. So that's all of the housekeeping items. I wanted to jump right into our purpose for this session. So our purpose in terms of learning goals. So tonight, we're going to be looking at learning more about the enduring concepts that the text refers to as assessment cookies, because we know they are foundational to helping us make decisions about assessments. Now the two success criteria that we have, 
One is that you can actively participate in professional dialogue with your colleagues. So really balancing sharing your ideas while listening to the ideas of others. And second, that you can use the ideas from the text and the conversations you have tonight to make improvements to the assessment practices back in your own classroom, school, or district. So tonight is really about you having conversations to deepen your understanding and see what other people are doing. So as Carrie mentioned earlier, we are gonna be putting you into breakout rooms several times throughout this session. And the people you go into this very first breakout room, that's gonna be the team you're gonna stay with for the rest of the session. So what we're gonna do is in just a few minutes, we're gonna send you into your first breakout room. The very first thing we want you to do when you get in there is to determine who's gonna be person one, two, three, and four using alphabetical order of your first name. So just as an example on the screen, if you are in a breakout room with these people, you would see that Angie would be person number one. Her name comes first alphabetically. David would be number two, Melissa number three, and Sam number four. The whole purpose of doing this is it's going to help us to both structure and manage the breakout room conversations as well as the whole group discussions we'll have as we come out of those breakout rooms. So when you go into the breakout room, again, as a reminder, first thing we want you to do is to number off one, two, three, four. And then once you've determined that, make sure you write down that number. So make sure that you do write down so you can remember when you go to the breakout room, which person you are. Then to help you get to know each other a little bit better, we're gonna ask you to do a single round robin. So single means you only go around one time. When it's your turn to share, you're gonna share all three of these items. What is your name? What is your role and location? And then if you could travel to any one new place, where would it be and why? So we're gonna pause for just a minute to give you a little think time so you can decide how you want to respond to that single round robin and to let you take a picture of the slide if you would like to have it to reference when you go into your breakout room. So remember, when we send you to the breakout room, first thing, decide who's gonna be person one, two, three, and four using alphabetical order and make note of which person you are. And then number ones, you will start the single round robin. So you're gonna go in order of person one, two, three, and four. And then when we close the breakout room, you're gonna see a 60 second countdown timer cut up, or come up and that's gonna let you know that you just have 60 seconds to wrap up your conversation before you are returned to the main session. So Thomas, are we ready to go to breakout rooms? Yes, we are. And then if you all notice, we also put those items in the chat. So if you want to, if you forget exactly what you're or, um, supposed to respond to, you can see them there in the chat. So we'll see you back here in just a few minutes. So everyone who is still in the main room with us, did you receive an invite to go to a breakout room? Did anyone not receive an invite to go to a breakout room? And Thomas, I think Abby Morris just joined us, so you may need to add her to a breakout room. She has been assigned. Thank you. Sarah, did you receive an invite to a breakout room?
and Jenny just joined us, Thomas, so you may need to assign her. Jenny, we're about to send you out to a breakout room. We just started them. Abby, did you receive your invite for a breakout room? Abby has been invited to room number two. Okay. Oh, got it. Woo, everybody's in. We definitely have some different internet speeds tonight. That's what I was thinking as well. Yeah. And you all, I think that's good practice. I do think we'll also see that in March leadership. So one of the good things is um, for the rest of the breakout rooms tonight, and then for um, the same thing with March leadership, we will wait to broadcast a message to start something until we see that everybody's in a room. And I'm under the assumption that that's when the timer would start as well, correct? Correct. Yep. Okay, just making sure. And oh, let me get my timer up. So when we get to that here in just right. a minute. Okay. I have mine set for four minutes. For this breakout room? Yeah, you said four to five minutes, and at four we would. Ashley's getting ready to be admitted, so she'll need to be added to a breakout room. Okay. Ashley, we just went to breakout room, so Thomas is about to send you an invite to join a breakout room. Yep, room number six. Hi, Amy. Did you get kicked out of your breakout room or did you all come back? Oh, yes, we finished. We didn't know. We had talked. We had named all of the things. I'm oh, that's men. okay. We can go back if we need to. No, we're going to get everybody. And we only had three people, so. Okay. Um, we have different speeds of internet for people getting into their breakout rooms. Mm -hmm. So we'll be just a couple of more minutes before we come out. So Kristen, Amy, where are you all from? I'm from uh, Boone County, Northern Kentucky. I'm the director of assessment. Hi, my name is Amy Callisti. I work in Jefferson County Public Schools. I work as an ESL resource teacher. Well, thank you for joining us. And Thomas, Patty just joined. So we're gonna need to add her to a breakout room on that next go. I'm muted again because my dog is like barking at everything right now. And then Sherry, where are you from? I don't know if Sherry can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. I teach first grade in Hardin County. Well, thank you for joining us. And I have a lot of respect for our elementary teachers, like especially our little ones. I, virtually, I imagine that is incredibly challenging. <laughs> It has been unique. <laughs> <laughs> and Thomas, we can go ahead and close. And Carrie, do you mind it? Oh, thank you. You got it. Welcome back, everyone. We're just waiting for most people to get back in here in the main room.
And I think we're still waiting on a few more. Oh, I think we are, we have most people back. Um, one thing before we move on that I do just quickly want to say is we know that everyone has different internet speeds um, and that can kind of sometimes slow you uh, down into getting into your breakout rooms. So keep in mind, we're trying to really honor that because it's not anything any of us have control over. Um, and so when we send you into breakout rooms from this point on, we will always give you a broadcasted message when we want you to start whatever the thing is we're going to have you do because we're going to make sure everyone's in their breakout room. So no one gets left out of the conversation that you're going to have. So you're about to see an example of what we're talking about with it. So what we want to do now is that you've met the people who are going to be in your breakout room. We want to have just a general conversation around this, uh, this whole topic of assessment. So we have two questions for you to consider. One, what are some ways you currently assess student learning in the distance and blended settings? And what maybe some successes that you've had and challenges that you face regarding student assessment in this setting. The second question, many of you were able to attend our opening session with Doug Fisher or watch the recorded version of it. What were some ideas or concepts that resonated most with you from that opening session? So what's going to happen is we're going to give you 45 seconds each in your breakout room to respond to these questions. You can choose to respond to just one of them or you can um, choose to respond to both. But we're going to pause right now, give you some think time. So you may want to grab your notebook and just jot down some things that you want to share during your 45 seconds when we send you to your breakout room. So we're just going to pause right now. Okay, um, you may want to take a picture of the slide if you want to be able to reference back to those questions when you go into the breakout room and Thomas has also posted those in the chat for you. So when you go into your breakout room, each person is going to have 45 seconds to share their response. Um, and we will broadcast a message when we want you to start because remember we're going to wait for everyone to get into the breakout room. Number one, you are going to start the timed round robin. And then when 45 seconds are up, we will send another message for you to switch to number twos. And then we'll broadcast a message for you to switch to threes. And then a broadcast a message to switch to fours. At the end of the time for number four sharing, we're going to broadcast a message that will say move to open discussion. So that time you will have an opportunity to maybe ask questions um, around something someone has shared in your breakout room or to add on something that maybe you didn't have time to share. So again, number one is the time round Robin. We're going to wait for everyone to be in their breakout rooms and we will broadcast a message when we want you to start and then we'll continue to broadcast to help move you through this structure. We're going to give you about two to three minutes of open discussion time at the end. So just be ready for that. So again, ones are starting. Thomas, go ahead and send them to breakout rooms, but everyone wait for the message before you start. And anyone still in the main room, if you did not receive an invite, just let us know to a breakout room.
Miss Stinkeri, do you think we have critical mass enough or do you would I think so. Wait? Yeah, go ahead and start them. And I started that timer. Oh, good, good. And then I think the other thing that's happened is we had so many people join kind of in later that we do have some a, a few groups that have five. And so do we would we just want to add a, a few more seconds yeah. to yeah? You know. Or they can even use um, that open discussion time if they had to. Okay. Um, we've got someone coming in right now, Amy Atkins, that you will need to. Um, does anyone recognize this? T O B X U T one. I, I don't know who that is. Um, I do not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Amy, we are getting ready to add you into a breakout room and they'll fill you in on what's happening once you get in there. And then Thomas send the message to switch to number twos. Sent. Thank you. Um, Thomas, do you see the person? Um, send a message to switch to number threes. And then the um, T-O-E-X-U-T, that is Brenda Dunning. So can you send her to her room, please? Yeah, I believe I did. I believe she should have an invitation to number eight, room eight. Brenda, did you receive an invitation to a breakout room? Can you maybe recent put her in another one? She's saying she has not seen it. Okay. Oh, she went that time. Sorry, Thomas, I know that's a lot going on in the background for you. You're good. Oh. And then switch to number fours. And Thomas, when you word this next message, you might want to say, if you have a number five, please mm -hmm. give them time to share. That's what I'm doing right now. Okay. And then get ready to broadcast that message. Okay. Good to go? Yep. And then... I'm going to set it for two minutes and 30 seconds and we'll see how that feels. <laughs> with Brenda's name showing up the way that it was showing up, I'm always a little worried because um, at first I was like, wait, has someone gotten into our meeting that shouldn't be? <laughs> I had the I exact same thought. I was like, this is a hacker. You have to tell us if you're a hacker. <laughs> And so like, she, I was prepared to block video and like I had my cursor on the three dots to block the video. So I was she ready. messaged me and said, hi, I'm not in a room. And I was like, what is your name? Cause like, I, I could probably write, she's who texted me this morning about wanting a book, Carrie. So oh, okay. <laughs> once you tell me her name, like, okay, this is a real person in here. <laughs> Sad that you have to worry about things like that. I know.
So if we close the breakout room in 16 seconds, Thomas, they have a minute countdown. So that would be the full three minutes. Right. So you can send that in. Okay, go ahead and send that one. Or close it out, I should say, not send that one. Welcome back. All right, Amy, Krista, you all have some, and Cher, you all have some quick internet. You got in here before anybody else. <laughs> I guess, yes. Followers, I see that. I'm like, oh, it's time to go back. <laughs> Yes, the snow's been melting here at Louisville. So yeah, I guess maybe that back, but last week the internet connection was spotty with those storms and all, but now that the sun is out and all the snow is melted here, it's, yeah, it seems quicker, yeah, today. Well, I, and I think for our people in Eastern Kentucky, some of them are just getting electricity and water back today. So I'm sure their speeds might still be slowed down some. Okay, it looks like we have most people back. So I want you to think, Based on the conversation that you just had in your breakout room, what was one idea or something someone said that maybe resonated with you that was kind of a takeaway that you had from that breakout room discussion? So everyone just think and get that idea in your head. Okay, we're about to have an instant star. So if you are person two on your team, you are the new instant star. And so what we're gonna ask you to do is you can either unmute and share your takeaway with the group, or you can just post it in the chat, whichever one you are most comfortable with. But number twos, we're gonna open up the floor to you. So what was the takeaway that you had from that breakout room? Hi, my name is Mary. I was in room two. Uh, my takeaway was that we all are kind of struggling with some of the same issues. Um, and it was kind of uh, great to hear the other ideas that some of the other folks were sharing out that they were doing. Uh, but it seems like we all have a lot of uh, same um, same things in, in common of issues that we're having as far as assessment. Yes. And doesn't it sometimes at least make you feel a little bit better to know others are struggling with, like, none of us really have all the answers yet. Other number twos, again, feel free to post in the chat or unmute and share your takeaway. I'll go uh, next. I was in the breakout room number six, and one of the things that we talked about was that pedagogy really hasn't changed and shouldn't change just because we're on the digital platform. And one of the things uh, that uh, Doug Fisher mentioned was the fact about wait time and how important that still is. Uh, and so then we also also had the same issues too of, of engagement and getting kids to participate. And then the age old question, is that really the kid or is that the parent? And I know that for us in our school district, we've noticed that maybe some of our kids completed a lot of their assignments and work from uh, midnight to 3 a.m. So maybe they're, maybe the first grader is staying up that late and, and, and burning the midnight oil, but sometimes we're, we're curious about that. Yeah, and Jason, I love what you said about, you know, pedagogy, good pedagogy is good pedagogy, regardless of the setting. And we're actually going to revisit that parent one a little bit later. So that's going to come back up as well. And I'm seeing a lot of things in the chat too. Um, some great things about, again, that we all have some common issues. Um, we're all using different assessment forms, um, the different ways we're collecting data, um, response cards. It looks like many of you are starting to use some of the strategies and tools that Doug Fisher shared in that opening session. Um, and I love what you're saying, Chris, about it doesn't have to be formal. Most of the information we gather to make those minute by minute, day by day decisions are in an informal kind of formative assessment process way. Um, so I love that. Um, and some of you talked about just finding good assessment tools. So before I move on, I quickly just want to open it up. So anyone else, as you read through the chat, 
from what you've heard people share, did you have anything new that you would uh, like to add with to the group? So again, feel free to unmute or put in the chat. So something different than what we've already heard. I was in breakout room five and I thought it was interesting. Someone made the comment that sometimes teachers don't see um, some of the virtual assessments as really good assessments that they are. You know, students leaving a, a 15 second video uh, about what they've learned that sometimes they were getting better data than they were in the classroom, but teachers didn't necessarily value that or see that. And that may, that's going to be interesting moving forward is thinking about what are those pieces of the virtual setting, whether it was assessment or whether it's our instruction that we need to keep around because it is still good instruction and can support our students when we go back. Okay, I'm going to hand it back over to Carrie, who's going to lead us through looking at the first chunk of assessment cookies that was shared in section one. Thank you, Misty. So moving on, as stated earlier, chapter one really focuses on those enduring understandings called assessment cookies that help us make those regular decisions around assessments. Assessment cookie one, assessment is difficult because it is important. So we know assessments are an important part of the teaching and learning process because they help to inform next steps for teachers and students. So when we consider rigor, we have to look closely at the difference between both difficulty and complexity. So balancing difficulty with complexity. Difficulty is the measure of time, work, and effort needed to complete a task and is based on correctness. Complexity, on the other hand, is about the thinking, action, or knowledge needed to complete a task. While some people confuse rigor and complexity as one and the same, Rigor does not equate to more. So for example, more work math problems or longer passages or more work. It's really about the complexity of the thinking. So the Kentucky Academic Standards are designed to increase the complexity of thinking for our students by asking students to think at deeper levels, at increasingly deeper levels as they move along their learning progressions towards achieving their learning goals. So how teachers measure that thinking or knowledge on a task can be accomplished in a variety of ways. From our text and personal experiences, we know that assessments can come in all shapes and sizes. So any assessment can be used formatively or summatively. However, considering what you are assessing and how the assessment information will be used is important to remember when selecting the assessment type. If teachers and students are unsure of the purpose of the assessment, then we argue that the assessment is not appropriate to time or place. Assessment for learning is really that ongoing formative assessment process. It informs teacher practice and works to improve learning. Assessment as learning is all about supporting students in managing their own learning through self-assessment and goal setting. So really fostering independence and self-regulation for students. And then lastly, assessment of learning, which is really that summative evaluation at the end of a period of instruction. So it's used to make judgments about student performance or achievement and can take numerous forms, such as a grade, a level of achievement, or a rubric descriptor. Assessment cookie three, knowing the learner and their learning journey. For those of you who participated in our fall book study, the Distance Learning Playbook, it really emphasized that in order to establish teacher credibility and build relationships with our students, we have to call on students by name, know their interests, and where they are in their learning journey. We can then use this knowledge of where students are to help accelerate their learning. With many schools and districts coming out of pandemic teaching, we know that learning gaps are going to be a reality. There are always, there, there are always a reality in our classrooms, right? When, but when deficit thinking creeps into our minds, it can lead to lowered expectations. Both the distance learning playbook and the assessment playbook for distance and blended learning stress the mindset of accelerating student learning, not continually remediating. Because let's be honest, most schools don't have the human resources to remediate for all students, but we do have the means to accelerate learning 
in a variety of ways. So providing key aspects of knowledge in advance of instruction or increasing the relevance of students learning or creating active fast paced learning experiences that really build on students confidence. So for more information about this, you can look to your text in page on page 12 and 13. And this really speaks to that uh, differentiation between acceleration versus remediation. In regards to assessing that which is taught and teaching the standards, we need to build assessment through the lens of teacher clarity. So assessment cookie four is all about assessment, that which is taught, assessing that which is taught and teaching based on the standards. And as mentioned before, we ultimately want students to be independent, self-regulated learners who can be drivers or managers of their own learning. The outcomes or standards kind of serve as our guideposts for instruction and assessment development. And when communicated regularly with clarity, help us to build assessment through the lens of teacher clarity. In order for this to happen, students need to be able to answer those three clarity questions that we really visited in our fall book study for those of you that joined us then. So the first question, what am I learning? We use our learning intentions to help answer that question. Why am I learning this? That's really the purpose or relevance for students. And then finally, how will I know that I've learned it? So that's the success criteria that are indicators of student learning. So now let's really dig into what works in assessment. So for our second content breakout room discussion for you tonight on the screen on the right hand side are the first four assessment cookies from the text. Now the questions we want you to think about tonight. Which of these assessment cookies do you currently apply to your assessment design? For example, on my assessment, something like on my assessments, I often make note of which standard I applied to each item. That might be a strategy that you currently use in your assessment design. Second, what are some examples of how you have applied the different assessment cookies? For example, when it comes to size, I might give a quick formative rather than a large project where I'm having students apply multiple standards. And third, which assessment cookies might be possible areas of growth when designing your assessments? So I'm gonna give everyone an opportunity right now to grab your notebook or sheet of paper, whatever you're taking notes on, and you're gonna have about six minutes in your breakout room to share your thinking around these three questions. So I want you to pause right now think and jot down, and you can prioritize which of these questions you most want to respond to, but just jot down some of your thinking around these now. So I'm gonna pause. All right, I would encourage you, if you have your phone, you may want to take a quick picture of this screen so you can refer back to the questions in your breakout room. And Thomas is also going to post those for you in the chat. So here's what's going to happen. When we go into the breakout room, we're going to do a continuous round robin. So each person will share one idea around any of the three questions. So we're gonna start with number twos. And just as a reminder, be sure that anytime you enter a breakout room tonight, you take just a few seconds to introduce yourself if you haven't done that already or if you end up in a different breakout room. When you have 60 seconds left, we will broadcast a countdown and we're going to give you a pause before we start the timer 
just to give a chance for everyone to get into their breakout rooms like we did before. So please wait for that broadcast and mes message before starting your breakout room discussion. So if you haven't already, take a picture of the screen, be prepared to share, and when we bring, and then we will bring you back to the whole group. So Thomas, are we about ready for breakout rooms? We are ready, I will open them. Great. So Thomas, I will start the countdown timer then for four minutes, right? Because mm -hmm. we'll close it at the end of that. Right. And I've broadcast the, the message. Looks like everybody went that time. And I'll monitor the chat for you moving forward, Misty. Thank you. But you still have this slide when they come back out, right? I'll just pick up at assessment cookie five. Um. Yeah, I can. I'm not able to, since you're sharing now, I'm not able to see my notes, but. Okay. I think it's just that it's going to be, um, when we come back out again, just let them think about what was one takeaway, one idea, something that resonated with them from the breakout room. And I think it's going to be number three's turn to be the um, instant star to share. Okay. Yeah, I see that now. And we're really not doing that on time at all. Because we, I think adding that extra 15 minutes on and going from 4.30 to 5.45 makes a difference. I think it makes a huge difference. Yeah. It just gives us cushion to get mm -hmm. everybody settled in and transition. Mm -hmm. Also, Carrie, I'm sorry if I sounded awkward when you asked about the breakout room. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I'm like wait am I supposed to talk or just do it so apologize for that <laughs> no I just don't like to uh Missy and Lo I like to give each other a heads up just in case you know because as you're admitting putting things in the chat like it's a lot to navigate sometimes so it's just kind of like we're gonna get you up. assigned to a breakout room and Thomas is going to send you out and once you get in that breakout room they're going to fill you in on what we're doing right now And welcome. <laughs> All right, I got you in the breakout room number two. So they're trying to reschedule the KEDC meeting for Friday that I was asked to join last week, but because of weather they postponed. And so it looks like it's overlapping with the CCSSO meeting. So I already let her know that I said I won't be available from 10 to 1130 so she's going to let me join starting at 1130 and then going till 1230 Friday. Um, I'm getting ready to admit someone. So Thomas, we may want to check and make sure they have a breakout room.
Amy, did are you just joining us or did you by any chance get kicked out and are coming back in? Oh, never mind. <laughs> I got her in room two. Okay. Nope, oh, she's back. Amy. Oh, nope, she's gone. <laughs> because of the time, I think we're okay to give them one more minute before we close the breakout room. What do you think, Carrie? I think so too. I think they're going to want to talk. They'll talk a lot, hopefully, about these. So I'm going to set the timer for one more minute and then we'll close the breakout room and that'll give them another minute. I don't think they would ever complain about more I time. Either. No. So I texted my kids to say at 430, we're starting our recording now. Please be extra quiet because Jackson's room's on the other side of our room. Hannah's across the hall. And why they wait until I'm recording and then they start texting me all these questions. What's for <laughs> dinner tonight? Hey, can I go with so-and-so to Target? Hey, what about this? Um, Thomas, I have a question for you. March leadership meeting, when you looked at the slides, Karen and I would like to add you to that slide of who are like the facilitators since you are going to be producing so much in the background. Are you okay with that? Or if you don't want us to, we won't. Yeah, no, uh, feel free to. I think it'll be, it'll be nice because they'll know who to reach out to, especially if they have technical difficulties. Yeah, because I had a note for us, whoever does that slide to say that. Um, we have someone else who's yeah. getting ready to come in, but go ahead and close the breakout rooms, Thomas. Okay. But I think it would be, hi, Ashley. But I think it would be nice for them to see the spelling of your name as well. Exactly. No, I agree. And Carrie, will you just let me, oh, no, you're taking the slide. Never mind. I was going to say, let me know when people are back because I can't see now. <laughs> hey, I'm flexible. Just let me know. I'll roll with it. <laughs> Hello, Amy. Hi, Sherry. Yeah, Thomas, let us know when we have most everyone back. I think there are like 43 we'll participants. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello, Mr. Asher. <laughs> Should be everybody. Diggins, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good, thanks. Do we we have have, yes, we have everybody back. Okay, now that we have most everyone back, here's what we want you to do. We want you to think about what is your one main takeaway, something that really resonated most with you from the conversations you had in your breakout room. So if you were number three in your group, we want to invite you to unmute and share out or feel free to share in the chat. What's one big takeaway you had from your breakout room? I'm Sherry and I was in breakout room four and one of the things that we talked about was just the importance of knowing that learner um, and knowing their learning journey because this year with blended learning we've had to get to know them not only as students in our room but as members of their family setting and we've had to, to work around um, you know home life and, and things like that so that's been that was a common thread we talked about and then also just working on trying to make sure our assessments are clearly aligned with standards and building in rigor 
because that's been a little more difficult, you know, over distance learning to make sure what we're doing is rigorous. Thank you for sharing, Sherry. So really being mindful of those home environments that students are in and also being very intentional in planning for those um, Kentucky academic standards and making sure that we are creating standards aligned, not only um, assessments, but activities as well. So thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Uh, this is from room seven. This is Dina. Um, I just want to piggyback on what uh, Sherry said. It was the same basic topics that we talked about and everyone was focusing on the knowing the learner and their learning journey. journey. Um, we talked about rigor, um, students being able to um, do the work, you having that, um, the, the parents were not doing it for them, but they were doing the assessments. And we had a wish of, wish we could focus more on that individual assessment with students. So some of the same ideas that Sherry's group came up on, but we did um, have a good discussion around all four, but that, that's what came back to me that we all focused in on knowing that learner and their learning journey. Thank you for sharing that, Dina. We know that's so critically important, not, not only in the, the distance and blended setting, but also face-to-face -face as well. So that continues to be important. Anyone else? Um, I was in breakout room three and to piggyback off of what the last two ladies said, we were pretty much identical. Um, <laughs> we hit pretty hard with the standards, cookie number four. Um, I was fortunate enough personally to attend the standard professional development in Lexington two years ago. And I think that's really helped. Um, but currently in my district, we have kind of flipped gears in aligning everything to those standards. And slowly but surely we have seen um, some positive change in our students and staff. Um, but we talked about that just all um, group wide and how important it is because there has to be that purpose and there has to be that intention behind why we are doing things that we're doing. Thank you for sharing that Taylor. And I think that's so critically important like we shared on the last slide that students see that relevance piece. So thank you. All right, well, I'm going to turn it over to Misty now, and she's going to talk a little more about assessment cookie number five. And Taylor, you gave me the perfect segue because a lot of the first two assessment cookies are that I'm going to discuss is around that purpose, really intentionality around it. So when we look at assessment cookie five, it states that students deserve to know what they should be learning. And one of the ways that we articulate this to our students is through learning intentions. Learning intentions um, help students to answer the question of what am I learning today? And they go by a lot of different names. So try not to get hung up, I think, on that phrase learning intention, because you in your school or district may call them learning goals. It could be objectives, targets, or outcomes. But what's important is that it clearly states to the student what it is they are learning. And going back to what Taylor was talking about, teachers develop their learning intentions as they work together to analyze and break down the standards to determine what exactly it is they need to teach and assess to see if students have met that grade level expectation. Um, and the text also talked about there's no one right way to write those learning intentions. So again, don't focus so much on like, am I writing it perfectly? It's more about what you're trying to convey. Then assessment cookie six states that knowing your destination helps. So along with students knowing what they are learning, they need to be able to answer that question of how will I know if I've learned it? How will students know when they've met that learning intention? And that is the purpose of success criteria. Well-designed success criteria, they really do become the foundation for assessment in our classrooms because ultimately those are what you are assessing. Your success criteria also guide the selection of your assessment task and the tools that you're going to use. Again, you have to have that alignment. One learning intention might have several success criteria associated with it, and it's helpful if you scaffold those success criteria from what's the surface level understanding they need to the deeper learning necessary for students to really meet that grade level expectation. 
Then assessment cookie seven, and again, you guys have hit on this one in eight um, throughout the session as well, but they remind us that everything is searchable, so we have to plan accordingly, especially in the distance learning setting. So we have to make sure that we don't limit assessment tasks to things that they can just Google, things they can just simply search for. So our assessment should include some tasks that are requiring students to search the internet, but then to use that information in some way. And then in the text, they talk about the difference between surface deep and transfer learning and how we have to make sure that our assessments align with the appropriate phase of learning. So if we're at that surface level, then we're choosing assessment tasks and tools that are at that surface level. But then when we get to that deep learning, again, those assessment tasks and tools need to really reflect what do students know and are they able to really go to that deeper learning level. And then finally, assessment cookie eight. It cautions us that parents want to help, and sometimes that can be a problem because they tend to overhelp. And overhelping, this is not a new problem, but it has been amplified in the distance learning setting. Um, and so we really want our parents to learn the language of learning and to help them be more than just the homework police. So the text really talked about how we need to teach parents how to appropriately help their children and to teach the parents about the value of valid assessment practices. So that when a student does take an assessment, it can be an accurate reflection of what they know or are able to do at that moment in time. And then that brings us back to the next breakout room. So again, looking on the right hand side, you can see those four assessment cookies that we just went over. And we actually have the same questions from the previous breakout room, but just applying them to those four assessment cookies. So number one, which of these cookies do you currently apply to your assessments? What are examples of how you apply those and which might be possible areas of growth? Now, if you are a coach or you're a leader, if you're an administrator, we want you to think in terms of what are you observing with your teachers just across your school or across your district? Like, where do you see that they tend to apply it? Examples of how they do or even possible growth areas for your teachers across the board. So I'm gonna pause, give you a few minutes to jot down your thinking. Take about another minute and wrap up your thinking. Again, you may wanna take a picture of the slide so you can have it to reference when you go into your breakout room. Thomas is also posting those questions in the chat for you. And we're gonna use the same structure. So when you go into your breakout room, once we broadcast the message for you to start, you're gonna do a continuous round robin. So each time it's your turn, you're gonna share one idea around any one of those three questions that you would like. And you just keep going around and around your team until we close the breakout room and you return to the main session. Number threes, you're going to start that round robin once we broadcast the message. So Thomas, go ahead and send them into their breakout rooms. And you started it, Thomas, so I'm going to go ahead and start the timer. 
And then anyone who's still in the waiting room, did you um, do you still need an invitation or did you receive an invitation to a breakout room? Again, did everyone receive an invite? Thomas, do they all have an invite and it's just taking a little time? Yeah, it looks like yeah, it. I think it's just taking time. It's showing that they've all been in the rooms. So I think okay. it's just a lag. Yeah, which on the continuous round robin, it's not as much of a big deal to you because they can just jump in when they get there. I'm gonna mute for a second. My husband just walked in, so I need to let him know when I need to shut the door in here. How was Jacob's birthday, Thomas? Did he have a good one? Yeah, he had a very good birthday. So, you know, I think it was one of those things where, you know, you we woke up that day and you just felt like, oh my gosh, like this is a pandemic birthday. Like really worried <laughs> that it was gonna be a downer. But like, you know, I went out and got donuts, a sprinkle donut for him that morning from North Lime Donuts in Lexington. And um, he opened some presents. Uh, he got like a Bakugan set from us, which was like just one toy, but like he, he's played with it every day since. So that was nice. And then for lunch, he got a treat that he never gets, which is a Lunchable. And so he was super <laughs> ecstatic about that. And then that night, of course, we kicked it off with birthday cake and Mickey D's. And so he said it was the best day ever, which was awesome because, you know, this is a birthday during a pandemic. So I was right. happy that he said it was a birthday bet best birthday ever but on the side note we also have had birthdays for him that are actually parties and we've gone to a lot of work and, and the fact that this one trumps all those makes me really like second guess myself on that well i think at the end of the day kids just want of any age just want to spend time with their family and oh, friends yes. you know and especially their parents like having that undevoted time with just you is so special no matter how old they are so yeah and it was great awesome. and and then we went sledding this weekend. So that was fun until he went into the creek. So <laughs> was the creek frozen? No, it wasn't. But the hill was. So we picked up just an, an crazy amount of velocity and just went shooting into the creek with. Yeah. And um, yeah, I went dad mode and just slid down, slid down the hill like penguin style and jumped in after him. And he was pretty upset. But <laughs> and, you know, we were we were all pretty upset. But afterwards, it's just like, all right, he's OK. So. Were you far from home that you could get him home and get him out of the wet? Yeah, no, we, we were pretty close. It was just like a, an elementary school here in town. Okay. Yeah, we have um, a couple of great places for kids to um, do some sledding. And yesterday we noticed that when we were walking Zoe, some had set up like banked up the snow so they would have oh, yeah. them airborne. Um, but I wanted to go in all like science teacher mode and tell them like why when they put it at the top, it wasn't that great versus they put it more toward the bottom because they would have more speed because they right. couldn't understand when they put it at the top, they would like kind of not even really get over it. I'm like, you don't have enough speed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was always fun to make those little ramps. Ugh. I remember making igloos with my dad growing what? up in Lexington. Like my That's dad awesome. would build these snow igloos when it snowed a lot you know that's really cool yeah my mom has a lot of stories of growing up in Canada and doing those kind of things but I feel like the snow missed me growing up <laughs> still lived in eastern Kentucky <laughs> 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 and it's amazing how they just get which you know you're in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains so it makes sense but just the amount of snow that they get versus the rest of the state yeah yeah, well, even hearing Ray's stories, I mean, we got, I mean, we had like, you know, like three or four inches here and Ray got like 10 to 12. Right on that river. Yeah, right on that river. Yeah. Does she drive least... from Sparta every day? She did. Yeah. Wow. She drove up and I was like, I was always worried about her, like, because she'd have to leave at like four. Because mm -hmm. she had that early work schedule too. She had to be there by seven. So... That's a haul. Yeah, it is. And when it's icy and snowy, like, and she's like going on those little little back roads in Warsaw, in Sparta to get to the interstate. Ugh. Hmm. I mean, that's a couple couple hours from. Yeah. From here, you know, I'm almost in Louisville, so.
Thomas, let's go ahead and close the breakout room. Okay. And I think all that's left is just posting two links, right? After we. That's correct. It must have been a deep conversation because it's coming back in. Again, Amy, I think you've got the quickest internet of anybody here. <laughs> Even Krista, every time. <laughs> and Carrie, will you let me know when we have everyone back? I will. Thank you. We can tell that you guys were having great conversations because you were using every second in that countdown um, before the breakout room closed. And I think we have most people back now, correct? We're still waiting on one or two, it looks like. All right, I think we're good now, Misty. So I want you all to think about the conversation you just had in the breakout room and what was one thing that stood out to you, something that resonated with you, um, could be just something that was common across a lot of what you were sharing, but everyone just think and get that idea in your head. And then lucky number fours, you are going to be our instant star. So number fours, would you please um, feel free to unmute and share your takeaway or you can post it in the chat. So number fours, we'll open the floor up to you. Hello, I'm in group three, room three, and my name is Tina Rose. And what we discussed about uh, a lot of us as MSD teachers and how that we are making sure that our students are actually learning what they are, the, the why, why are we learning this? We discussed that knowing and knowing the destination of what they needed and why they need it. And I used examples where I'm an MSD teacher. I try and teach them money and why they need to learn money. And then one of the others was talking about the road signs, having to read these signs and understand, you know, this means don't walk, this is police and, and incorporating just basic everyday instincts that we all have that some of our students don't have. And then uh, I know they touched on making sure that everything may be not be as easy to search and look for it on Google to where they can get the answers, not have all multiple choice answers. Absolutely. Because again, when they're at home, we can't really monitor to the same level we could at the in the face to face setting to see if they're simply Googling an answer to a math problem. So how can we really create those to ask them to do a little bit more than that? All right, any other number four? Tina, thank you so much for sharing. Yes, um, we, I was in group number six, great group, um, and ditto what she just said. It's really about thinking outside of the box on how the students will communicate their learning. And uh, what we've had to embrace over the past several months has been you know, concepts like flip grid videos, you know, instead of having the student complete a multiple choice task, you know, possibly have them reflect on their learning just in a video. This way we know that the student actually did the work. And um, the second thing would be for our parents to clarify the purpose of the learning and uh, we're so excited about the family guides that are a great resource that is available that will help parents, it will equip parents to know what questions to ask their students to kind of clarify what it is that they need to learn. So great group, I love group six.
<laughs> and I love that you all are introducing yourself. You're saying what group you're representing. Um, and I see several of you in the chat are talking about the power of success criteria. And, you know, in, in many of you, are, I think, are saying that a, a, a growth area is really on the parent side. I do think success criteria can help our parents as well, because if they clearly know what it is we're trying to measure and what success looks like, then I think that better helps them to assist their students or their child in an appropriate way. Any other number fours, or at this point, I'll open it up to anyone else who would like to share something around that last breakout room. Misty, we also had someone from room number one say that their team really talked about the why and the relevancy, how students to know, know, deserve to know what they should be learning. And they also discussed cookie number seven, how everything is searchable. So designing assessment around the Google world and going beyond the doing. And I see where group eight also talked about util or utilizing strategies that move past that surface level learning to the deep learning. And it goes back to, again, something Taylor said earlier about assessing to the standards, to the full depth of the standards. And we can't just say surface level all the time. We need to see, are they getting to that full depth? And I so, have to add as an assessment director, kind of my spiel about <laughs> <laughs> um, cookie number seven, leading to that rigorous and how that was a growth area that I put down of how do we incorporate it, um, our literacy design collaboratives, the math design collaboratives, the so through course task where they're very rich and rigorous that's specific to a standard, but it's not 20 multiple choice questions, right? It's a task that students have to synthesize. So that's my assessment two points of that's more, much more beneficial to know where what students know or don't know with a very rich and, and engaging task. Yes, and Chris, I would add to that it often also establishes relevance for the kids because through those tasks, they get a relevant prompt that's telling them why this information is important. Okay, one of the things that we wanted to do is just share with you some of the resources we have that could support you as you're really working with these assessment cookies. And I think something important to know, and you all probably realize this too, these assessment cookies, all eight of them, they are true regardless of the setting we're in with kids. We need to constantly keep those in mind as we design our assessments, whether it's in the blended learning, in the distance learning, or in the face-to-face -face setting. So when it comes to really being able to develop those learning goals and success criteria, one of the resources we have to support teachers in those conversations are the breaking down a standard protocols. These are available on KY standards. We have one for each content area, and it really walks teachers through a process of getting into the standards document for that content area and how they can utilize the supports that are in the document to get at the heart of what a standard is asking the kids to know and be able to do to ensure they're getting to that full depth. And I think Thomas is posting the link for that in the chat box now. The other one we wanted to mention is this year we are um, within the Division of Program Standards, we are doing a lot of work around um, balanced assessment. And so as a part of that work, we did this in partnership with WestEd, we created a resource called the Meaningful Learning Goals and Success Criteria Checklist. And again, Thomas is putting a link for it in the chat as well. You will see that instead of learning intentions, we use the term goals, but again, it means the same thing. But what you see on the first page of the checklist are what are those big things we need to keep in mind when we are creating learning in in intentions or goals that are aligned to the Kentucky Academic Standards and to make sure that they truly help kids answer the question of what am I learning today? The second page to that is the success criteria checklist. So how do we create success criteria that we know are aligned to the helping kids answer that question of, well, how when I know when I've learned it? So again, we just wanted to share those resources with you. And then before we close it out, we wanted to open up the floor to see if anyone had any final thoughts that they would like to share with the group this afternoon around the assessment cookies that we've shared tonight. Again, feel free to unmute or you can put it in the chat. Missy, Sherry Curtis just shared that she's used these protocols and she really likes them, so. The breaking down a standard protocol, yeah. They really help teachers to understand what's in that standards document in such a just a great way to be able to develop the learning goals and success criteria. Anyone else have just any takeaways from this session? Mr. 
Misty. Taylor, when um, you say will these be shared in GC in the Google Classroom, they're on the learning plan. The breaking down a standard one is not, but we will go back and add that to the learning plan and we will add those in Google Classroom for you. Yep, great idea, Taylor. Thank you. Okay. I think Maggie had a comment, Misty. It looked like Maggie had a comment. Not a big deal at all. I just said that one thing that we shared in our breakout room was that the great thing about teaching is that it matters every day. But that's also one of the challenges about teaching is that it matters every day. And so I just was so encouraged by getting talk to talk to my breakout room and by seeing leaders on here because that's when you know that it matters to them. And so that's really encouraging for me. Thank you, Maggie. And you're right. It, it's hard because it matters. It, it definitely is. But we know that it's important. Um, as a reminder, our next synchronous session will be March 22nd, same time as we did today from 4.30 to 5.45. Um, you have a link to it already in your learning plan, but we'll post a reminder in the Google Classroom. And then, as always, if you all have any questions or would like to give Carrie and I feedback on how we can better meet your needs in these live sessions, please feel free to um, email us. You can see our emails on the screen. Um, we definitely welcome that feedback, and we hope to see you back here for our live session in March. So everyone have a great evening. Um, go and wrap up your work day and enjoy some time with your family. Bye, everyone. You all are wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks a bunch. Bye, everyone. Bye.